Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so will it be when the Son of Man comes. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? That's what I'm talking about on this edition of Spirit Church. But first, Stephen Mockism is here with us. He's going to lead us in some anointed worship. And then we're getting into this very timely message here is Stephen Moctezuma. If the altars where you meet us, take me there, take me there. If you're looking for an offering, it's right here, my life is here, I will be a living sacrifice. that verse again, Matthew chapter 24, verse 27. For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Mark chapter 13, verse 26 says, Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds 
with great power and glory. When Jesus returns, the sky will split open and all will see Him coming in His glory. When Jesus returns, He will return in power and in authority. When Jesus first came to this earth, He came as a lamb. When He comes again, He is coming as a lion. When Jesus first came to this earth, He came to bring salvation. When Jesus returns to this earth again, He's bringing with Him judgment and righteousness. Jesus is coming. I know it's not a popular message. I know it's not politically correct to say it. I know that I could look crazy to some for even declaring it, but the Bible teaches it, so I'm going to say it. It's the truth. Jesus is coming. That's a warning, and that is an encouragement. It's something for some to celebrate, and for others, it's something to fear. Jesus is coming. It will cause terror in the hearts of some, and it will cause us to rejoice as we look and see the coming of our salvation, our Savior, or Lord, coming on the clouds with glory, armies of angels following him. Jesus is coming. The Bible says this in 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse number 3. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. Here's what they're going to say, verse 4. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. So there will be people who say, look, nothing has changed. We've been continuing with life as we know it. Generation after generation, preachers have said, Jesus is coming. And that's what they're going to say to us. That's what they will continue to say. There go those crazy preachers again. There go those conspiracy theorists, those Christians speaking about the return of their Lord. Well, if he was coming, wouldn't he have arrived already? What's taking him so long? Why is he waiting? The Bible tells us that this attitude will be present, actually prevalent in these days. People will mock, people will laugh, but the reality is Jesus is coming. Verse 5, they deliberately, describing those people who mock, they deliberately Forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with the mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment. When ungodly people will be destroyed. Verse 8, you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. Now, this verse here is not giving us a literal comparison, because in eternity, time does not apply. God is outside of the realm of time, so he doesn't even necessarily experience days and years. He sees it all at once. It's all already occurred. Now, God, being outside of time, is still being very patient. Why? Verse 9, the Lord isn't really being slow about His promise, as some people think. No, He is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief, and the heavens will pass away. This is amazing how the Scripture describes this. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. Let's take a look at this again and I want you to really think about what the Bible is saying. The heavens will pass away with a terrible noise. What kind of noise is made when the cosmos disappears? What sort of terrible noise is made, is heard, when the universe itself ceases to exist? The Bible goes on to say, and the very elements themselves, think about that, the very elements themselves will be destroyed 
in fire. All of reality as we know it will cease to exist. Reality will dissolve. The sky will recede like a scroll. As an example to help you understand this, and I'm not even sure that this is something we can fully understand on this side of eternity, but I want to help put this into perspective from what we know in the scripture. Of course, I'm not saying even that I fully understand this. I don't. I cannot comprehend it. I can't fathom this, that reality itself as we know it, time, matter, space, cease to exist. It's an, it's an amazingly deep concept. But I would liken it to this, if I may. Several years ago, I purchased a VR system so that I could entertain friends and family when they come over the house. Now, the VR technology is amazing. It allows people to digitally visit worlds, worlds that would otherwise be unsafe. I've had some friends go into the system and go to space, digitally speaking, of course. And then others choose the underwater adventure, and most of my friends actually choose that. Most people who try this uh, system of mine, they choose to go underwater. And I'm always amused when I watch them in the system. They put the headset on, they go through the simulation, and they flinch at sharks that don't really exist. They reach for things with their hands that aren't really there. They point at things that only they can see. And all the while, they become convinced of this virtual reality. In fact, they start fumbling around the living room and I think that they forget that everyone else is there watching them. But even though they forget that I'm in the room with them, I never lose sight of them. I, I find it amusing watching them fumble around my living room as they're being in awe of this simulation. That's how it's going to be when the Lord returns. You see, when my friends come out of the simulation, they take the headset off and they become adjusted again to reality. When Jesus returns, what we know of this world will be completely dissolved. The headset will be removed. God is shutting down the simulation. And when that simulation has been unveiled, when, when, when the veil has been removed from our eyes, and we can see into eternity, we will recognize that God was with us in the room all along. You will recognize that as you went through this reality, God was right in front of you. God was looking at you. God was seeing your every action, your every thought. When we enter eternity, it will be more like waking up than falling asleep. Why? Because the presence of God, that's the reality. This is only the simulation. Jesus is coming again. And when he does come, it will be sudden, like lightning. Like a flash of lightning, he'll return. And then suddenly everything will be different. The Bible says this in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 36. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Like in the days of Noah. Before the flood waters came and destroyed the world, people were continuing in everyday life. They were celebrating the mundane and they were just enjoying themselves, not even thinking about God, not even considering their sin, not even considering the reality that they would be judged by a holy God for their wicked acts. No, they just continued living life. They went on marrying. They went on having parties and banquets. They lived their life much as people are doing today, much like people are doing today, I should say. They're pursuing their education, nothing wrong with that. They're 
pursuing their career, nothing wrong with that. They're raising families, nothing wrong with that. They're getting married and so forth, and there's nothing wrong with living life. But we mustn't forget that just like that, like lightning flashing, Jesus will return, and it will catch many people by surprise. Some people will be terrified when he returns. But not you and I, believer. You and I rejoice at the coming of the Son of God. You and I rejoice at the coming of the Son of Man. We're looking to that coming. We're expecting His return. Don't let the day catch you off guard. Don't be unaware concerning the seasons. At any moment, Christ can return. Are you ready for His return? We mustn't become so engrossed in the simulation that we forget whose presence we're standing in right now. You may not be able to see Him, but He can see you. And before you know it, the system's going to all be shut down, all of it, dissolved, put away, and you'll be standing before Holy God. My friend, be sure that you're right with God. Be sure that you're living according to His will. When He returns, is He going to find you faithful? When He returns, is He going to find you busy about His will? When He returns, is, he's go is He going to find a person of prayer, a person of faith, a person of holiness, a person of worship, a person of love, a person filled with the Holy Spirit? I hope so. Is Jesus your Lord? Is He your Savior? Are your sins forgiven? Are you ready to meet God? At any moment, Christ can return. Make sure you're ready. And that is it for this message. I hope it's very clear. Jesus is coming. The scripture declares it. It's reality. Even if people mock and doubt, it will be like in the days of Noah. It will catch them off guard. Don't be caught off guard. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your people watching this would be filled with joy and expectation. Let us live every day in light of your return, that we might be found faithful, Lord, that we might be found busy with your will, busy with your work. And Father, I pray for those who don't know you, who are watching this right now. For some reason, they don't know why, they just clicked on this video. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would lead them to Jesus. If you're watching me right now and you don't know the Lord, you're not saved, you haven't made Jesus your Savior, then I want to tell you this. Jesus loves you. And that is it for the message. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because... I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now to your comments. These comments are from last week's sermon called Responding to the Call of God. Make sure you watch that. And when you watch it, be sure to also subscribe. And if you're watching us not on YouTube, then go ahead and connect with us by any means necessary, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, email. Just connect with this ministry so that you don't miss a thing. And if you'd like me to potentially read your comments next week, then leave a comment in the comment section right now. Here are the comments from last week's teaching, responding to the call of God. Ne Moses writes, Thanks, Brother David, for the encouragement. I know that God is faithful and He will faithfully guide us in His will on earth. God bless us all. Alpha Skyrays writes, Thank you for your teaching through the Holy Spirit. This video really helps me. I never heard anyone preach about the idea that when action is taken, the Holy Spirit will guide you. I totally agree with you. Thank you for your wonderful words from the Lord our God. God bless you and your family. Actually, Alpha, that is a very um, rare message nowadays. There are two extremes people usually teach. Either wait till God speaks from the heavens or go do everything that's on your heart. Neither of those extremes are the way we should be carrying out ministry or pursuing the call of God. There's a very healthy balance to be found. 
and make sure you go watch last week's teaching to find out what it is. Mezzi writes, I'm so blessed after watching this wonderful message. Lately, I felt like I lost my connection with the Holy Spirit because of certain circumstances. But after watching this message, I feel like I'm able to connect with the Holy Spirit again. Thank you, Brother David and Brother Stephen, for always encouraging and boosting our spiritual lives. May God bless your ministry and all the members of Spirit Church. And Jennifer Geraldine writes, I have been a Christian for 28 years. In these past few months, God has put a burden in me for souls. I have been struggling when I pray in the Holy Spirit and in tongues. I came across your channel at the perfect time and all the videos are so practical and easy to understand. It has helped me a lot. It's amazing that these videos are free. God bless David and the ministry more and more. Well, Jennifer, I'm so glad to know the ministry is blessing you. And the reason these videos are free is because of our wonderful partners and friends who support this ministry financially on a monthly basis. Look, here's the reality. When we all stand before God, I'll tell you what's not going to matter. What's not going to matter is Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime. What's not going to matter is those extra drinks at Starbucks. What's not going to matter is the money we spend on recreation or the money we spent on nice clothes or nice watches or those sort of things. And look, there's nothing wrong with having those things. I'm simply saying that if we're going to have those things, we should also support the gospel. And if we can't support the gospel, maybe we should cut some of those things out so that we can. When you stand before God, will you be able to tell him, Lord, I did everything I possibly could that just one more soul might be saved. You know that for every dollar people give to this ministry, around 50 people hear the gospel. Think about that. They, get, they receive the word of God. For every dollar this ministry spends, around 50 people receive the word of God. That's incredible. So how do you know that what you're going to sow won't impact somebody's life? So I want to encourage you, become a supporter of this ministry today. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Go do it right now. Give a one-time gift or a monthly gift. Help continue to keep this content free. Think of it like a subscription, like to Netflix or to Hulu, except we don't force you to pay. We just ask you to do so when you can. Some of you can partner with us on a monthly basis. Some of you can give a one-time gift for the whole year. But whatever you do, do something that will please the Lord. Do something that comes from your heart. Look, if Jesus were standing before you right now, physically, right before you, and he had his hand out, would you put in his hand some tip, some token, a little dash of change? No, you would find your best gift, your most valuable thing, and you would place it into the hand of the Lord. And you would say, thank you for all you've done for me. Jesus has never held back from you. Don't hold back from him. Give today to this ministry. Put that resource in his hands by putting it into this ministry. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Lavish the Lord with a gift. Give him a gift from your heart. Tell him you love him and give something that's sacrificial, something that costs you something that the gospel might go forward. Look, don't give to get. God will bless you, yes, but that's not why you're giving. You're giving for the cause of the gospel going around the world. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Go do that right now. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.